Gianna, cheers. Ryan, cheers. Do Thank air you. cheers. Thank you. Glad to have you on. Thank you for having me. What most people don't realize is that when you're filling out the application, besides a certain select few that I really like or enjoy mm. or know their backstory, um, people are applying to come on and then we get on a phone call and I'm either like, eh, you know, not really my style right. or it doesn't fit the narrative or I like this person. And um, I think for some people that may watch this show for a little housekeeping, they're seeing these guys that are in their 30s making millions of dollars a year where they're doing revenues of $30 million, $60 million, things of that nature. It's not all about those types of guys. Right. You know, this, this story started out with Ryan was a regular dude who back in the day was, you know, into some trouble and didn't take the traditional routes and was able to go find financial freedom. Right. Whether people realize it or not, I already won. I have a house that I have on my vision board mm -hmm. 15 years ago. Um, I have a cool little chill backyard that I dreamed of having and I'm able to go for walks during the middle of the day right. with my family. Um, so we already won. This is about regular people trying to um, obtain a lifestyle for them and their family. And in talking to you, um, your story resonated with me and I'm excited to have people hear it, especially the moms hear it. Yeah. So thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. That was a long rant. Was it good? <laughs> it was good. All right. I'll take it. Um, so tell us a little bit about your company first. What, what's the name of it and the what's name, really the concept? The name is Chella Gold. Chella it, Gold. Chella Gold. It came about... I From have, DR. I have, I have two girls, but I always said if we had a third, I would name her Chella. So once we were done... The name just stuck with me, and gold to me is just, it's feminine, it's strong, um, and it just went together. And a few mm -hmm. people said, I don't really like it, I didn't care, I just stuck with what I wanted it to be. Um, and we were we were just a regular curated boutique. We launched, I launched in 20, 2019, so it'll be three years, the end of the month, and I didn't really have a plan. I just knew that I wanted to, that I wanted to do it. And my husband said, "If you're going to do it, make it legal." So we got all the papers done. My name is on everything. Smart I was so husband. proud. He said, "If we're going to do it, we're going to do it for real. It's not going to be like a little side thing. We're going to, you know, make it, you know, make it official." And I did, and it took me months. And there were no real ways um, or tips or tricks that I found. I mean, even three years ago, you you would YouTube like how to start a boutique and everything was quick. Launch your website in two hours, build your brand in, you know, in a week. And you would go down to like the show notes and you would click the website that this boutique was on and the boutique wasn't there anymore. Yeah. So I thought- You were in a sales funnel that I failed. I thought whatever they're doing, it's not what I want to do. So it took me months and I researched different vendors. I did all of the things, and we launched in <laughs> we launched in June, um, and it was amazing. And I had a lot of fun doing it. And then everything kind of shifted um, once Bef COVID. Before we get into COVID, mm -hmm. um, I kind of want to walk through your life and my life. Um, a little bit of how you got to where you are now. Married, two children. Yes. Um, Happily married. Happily married. Ten um, years. It's. I, I feel sorry for your husband. Sorry. <laughs> you seem like you're tough and yeah. you're, you're you're gritty, um, but that's what it takes to win in fucking business. Yeah, I agree. And uh, it's not easy. Uh, you don't have to be a tough guy or a tough girl, but you got to be mentally tough. You got to right. be battle tested. And you know, prior to starting the show, a lot of people don't realize I have a quick conversation. None of this is. Um, scripted. Scripted. It's all <laughs> ad-libbed. <clears throat> I just get a little bit of your background history right. in our phone call when you apply, and then, you know, having a cocktail before. Yes. Um, you were, you grew up in North Jersey. My in, parents grew up in North parents Jersey. Grew up in North Jersey. Yeah. You grew up in Tom's River. Yes. Um, you had a sister who was slightly older than you, yes. correct? Uh, her, yeah, seven years older. Seven years older. Uh, she, since then, has passed about yes. nine months ago in a tragic car accident. Yes. Um, you were you were close with your sister. She battled some 
ad yeah. addiction stuff yes. that she came through and had been killing it, and she was a right. professor. She was doing, yeah, she doing was doing amazing. Well. Um, and, and the reason I touch on that quickly is, you know, that affects everybody in the household. Um, I yep. lived it uh, in my life. Um, it's unfortunately just. Yeah, I think it's impossible to not be affected by it, even as much as you want to pull yourself and distance yourself away from it, which is what I did, to be honest, for the last 10 years. Well, you have to, because it's a yeah. negative tornado. Right. It, it will suck you in. Right, and I'm a very, like, what can you do at this point? Yeah. You just have to let it, just Run let it course. be. Right, and you try, and then I think you, some people don't get to the point, and they will always try, but for me, I had to distance myself. So yeah, so there was no relationship for, like she wasn't at my wedding mm -hmm. um, and I've been married 10 years now. So it's been a little bit. And if she did reach out, I would kind of just push it to the side. Yeah, because it, almost, I knew it what creates it did triggers. For me. Yeah, right. it creates triggers, it right. creates things. And, and sometimes we gotta cut shit out of our head. And right. some people may think that's cold um, but I, I fully feel you. Um, I just wanted to touch on it briefly because yeah. that is something that has made you more independent, whether you realize it or not. Uh, and uh, a new term I'm going to start, you know, using more is battle tested. Yeah. Um, I want people around me who are battle tested. I don't care if you're the prettiest. I don't care if you drive the Porsche GTS. Right. I don't care if you have, you know, a billion dollars. Right. You know, if you're battle tested, and you're going to get in the trenches with me, and we're going to have all, you know tides rise together, that's the person I want in my corner. Yeah. Um, so fast forward, um, you, you get into your 20s, you went to school for journalism. I did, yeah, I paid cash for, not that I took many courses, but I went to Ocean County College over here. Um, I loved writing. Say that a little bit more proud. You went, I you went to Ocean County I College. I did, I went to Ocean County College. I wanted to go far, but because of life and what was happening in my life, um, but I, I Do couldn't. Do you know Paul, who's co-founder of Bubba Coos? No, but we Ocean always eat at Bubba Coos. We always eat at Bubba Coos? Yeah. Well, my friend Paul, Okay. Um, as soon as he loses a little bit of weight, he's gonna come on the show, <laughs> Paul. Uh, he doesn't like how these chairs hit him on the angle. Uh, Paul's a very, very sharp guy. Yeah. Uh, misunderstood at times, but he's an OCC alum. Okay. And he goes back and, and talks all the time. So be proud of OCC. Yeah. No, I, yeah. I went there, um, paid for it myself. Paid, I had it set up where it was coming out every month or something. Um, but I went for journalism. I just enjoyed writing and I liked not being the traditional writer. When I would write, it was very like having a conversation with like a friend. It wasn't very like, Black Mishmash. and white, yeah. yeah. Um, and I realized that I enjoyed it, and I started a blog. I want to say maybe 2009. Now, you started the blog because you almost had a, a shopping issue where you're running I up did. all this credit. I did. I had a lot of credit card debt, um, and I had paid it off. So my blog at the time was based around finding different ways to save money, but then still shopping and, you know, finding like drugstore makeup and ways to not go back into debt, mm -hmm. um, affordable things. And I feel like at the time there weren't many blogs. This was like before it was now, like how many people were, How many people were reading it? How many people were My tuned in? My first post, I remember seeing it, it got a thousand views. And I had, like I, like, so, like, Instagram wasn't really, I, I, a thing. I don't think a thing. Um, MySpace was kind of fading out, but now I was Now this like, is going back 12 years, so for yeah. people who don't know it's- Yeah, this is a while. Instagram um, 2012, I think. Yeah. yeah. So it was before that. There was a few YouTubers, like the like old school, like um, Carly and Nicole uh, Guerrero. Like, and I thought like, oh, like, that's cool, but I liked writing, that was just mm -hmm. my thing. So it was based on finances, how you can pay off debt. I worked like three or four jobs at a time. Um, and then as my life changed, my demographic changed and my audience changed and it just, it kept growing. Yeah, and that is something that has allowed you to monetize mm -hmm. that blog as well as your Instagram right. and social media nowadays. And I think something you said to me in our conversation that I liked a lot, you were like, I think to the nature of like, these fucking people think they're gonna start a podcast or an Instagram page or a gonna... boutique shop and you build a brand in six months, nine months, a year. Right. 
and nothing worth doing is that easy. Right. If it was, there'd be a lot more there people be, right. doing it. Um, so little nugget, I like to give nuggets, just keep putting in the time. Right. Keep putting in the time. How many people do you have on your email list or your blog list that you can go blast out a sale to about right. your clothing company right. or about new sheets that are rolling out right. or about whatever it is that you're, you're doing? What's wor yeah, what's yeah, what's in the what's, works. Yeah, what's in the works, what's going on? You can get your people to know and they're tuned into you because they have some connection with you. Something right. about you and what Something you're- Something stuck. Yeah, it resonated yeah. with them. Yeah. Um, and just a little nugget. You got to just keep going and pressing forward. Yeah, and I think I think social media does a really good job at making people think that it's quick. Yeah. And I think especially everything. Right. And fake money, fake cars. Well, that's the thing. Like, and I think I said this to you on the phone call. I am like the anti "fake it till you make it." Yeah. Because. I have no problem talking about a month that sucked for our sales mm -hmm. or a launch where we sold nothing because people get the idea in their head that they can just start a podcast or start a blog or become an influencer and it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And then when it doesn't, they get discouraged and then they just stop doing it. Do you think it's because it's not a passion of theirs. It's a more thousand percent. Of, it's more of like uh, they want it because it's what's popular. I right want to be looked at. Right. Yeah, and again, I think for people out there that try to bust my chops, and I and I love you, and like you got to realize, I love the banter. Is uh, this is so much fucking bigger than right. me being a influencer? I right. don't give a shit. I've had big brands come to me already, be like, "Hey, let's partner." I'm like, "But you know this, this, and that." Like, no, we're not right. doing that. Hey, right. brought to you by so and so. Right. I'm not doing it. But you know, there's some people who will sell their soul. They'll sell their soul for yeah. anything. It's the yeah. same thing with like, hey, I can't talk about Trump. I can't talk about right. freedom. You know, I can't talk about Ukraine. Like, right. you're not paying attention to me as a whole if you don't realize what I'm really about. I'm right. about freedom, family, and my country. And Trump. And and Trump. Yes. Definitely Trump. Um, <laughs> So, you know, this is like a party going on over here, fireworks. I don't know what's going on. You never they know like what's going to go on. They like Trump. You never they know what's going to go on it. in the yard. Um, as long as it's not gunshots. The, uh, you know, at one point you were living with your father and your sister. Mm -hmm. And uh, you were kind of in between trying to figure out what you're going to do. And this is prior to meeting your husband. And you were sleeping on a uh, on a. On a naked mattress. mattress, yeah. Yeah, who ha would have had no sheets. Living room, yeah. Is that well, why you sell sheets now? Yes, that's why. I figured, take my history and now bring in bed sheets. I think I didn't put sheets on it because I didn't want to make it a bed. Have you connected with my pillow? Maybe you guys I can should. do it then. We should probably collab. <laughs> but I think I just, I didn't want to stay there. So I didn't make it comfortable. Mm -hmm. It was just, I mean, I was working like three or four jobs. So it was just a place to stay. Mm -hmm. where I could like keep an eye on my sister and then go to sleep and then wake up and like do what I needed to do. I'm but pretty sure I was still in school. Right there, work two or three jobs. Right. Again, you came in here, hey, my story is no different than anybody else's. I don't want to blow too much smoke up my own butt. <laughs> bah, 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 bah. I'm not that great. But no, it's but your story is going to resonate with somebody who thinks like you, likes to dress like you, has a similar story right. to you. Um, I shared it today on my Instagram. I went on a rant. I do that often. And I was talking about, like, share your shit. Like, yeah. share your story, your message, your message. I think more people, well, I think the right people find that and not even necessarily, like, relate to it, but that's what they want to hear. I think it's very easy to put on a persona of greatness and everything is great and I didn't struggle at all and my upbringing was so great and that's so bad because you know, everybody knows but it's bullshit it's just not like how and I was thinking the other day like when you I don't know like LeBron James let's just say I know nothing about sports but like how influential would he be if his story was just like paved mm -hmm. and he was and again I don't I don't think that it is but he was just like he grew up in a you know financially fit home and it's you know he had no problem getting into college and he never, you know, whatever. Like, it wouldn't be that great. His story would just be like, oh, okay. Like, he was a kid who had it and did well in a sport and just went off with it. But the people like 
the struggle. Yeah, they want to hear the struggle. And the right people want Why to hear it. Why is Tiger loved again? Right. Like, and I think there's people who want to hear it because they want to know. They're like, okay. Right, but I, I feel like there's people, there's, there's always bad people, but there's at least some person who's happy that you struggled. Yeah. Because now they're bitter that you got through it and now look at you. Yeah. And now you have the balls to build a brand or take the risk or just do whatever. There's always gonna be those people. Right. There's always yes. gonna be those people and there's nothing you can do or say or convince them of that is gonna change their reality of you. I've had people come at me sideways, Ryan, you were this, Ryan, you were that. I was never a malicious person. I was right. never a bad person. Maybe I had insecurities, maybe I was angry, maybe other stupid shit that was my triggers or my trauma and I don't need empathy. Right. I'm past that shit, I have no bitterness in my heart. Right. Um, but. And that's why you're successful. They wanna hold on to that. <laughs> right. They wanna hold on to that and uh, that's because they're unhappy with themselves and right. those people looked inward more and stopped looking outward for their happiness, uh, they would maybe be in a similar situation to you and they'd be sitting here today. Possibly. And I hope in the future, the person that's hearing that and it resonates with them, whether it be a hater of yours or of mine, I hope that they're sitting here one day and I hope they know that I mean that. Right. Um, so we'll move along, my ADD's <laughs> jumping <Kick it> in. in. <laughs> it's uh, the tequila. Yeah, it's the tequila, a little tequila and club. A little bit. Brought to you by Manasquan Bank. I don't have anything um, online. Oh, is that's this, Jackson is this National. Them? Okay. That's, that's Jackson. Yes. Um, the story of the mom, right? You're going into COVID now. Yeah. Two kids. You have a company. Things are firing. It's all legit. You're starting to bring in, you know, six figures yeah, a year. Yeah, decent amount. Changing your, changing your life. Now COVID hits. Yeah. What happens? COVID hits. Everything stopped. Um, we sourced most of our pieces from LA and LA shut down completely. So yeah. they couldn't get pieces brought in. They couldn't ship anything out. So everything stopped. And I'm a very- They have communism there. They're just, yeah. I'm a very, it always works out. I don't stress really ever. It takes a lot to really get me like stressed out. But I just said, okay, like, let me just kind of wait it out and see. And I wanted to kill time one day and got a white t-shirt from, I'm pretty sure it was my husband's old white t-shirt. And I went and I got dye. And I, I feel like everybody during COVID was tie dyeing. It was just to pass time. That was just what everybody was doing. So I did it. They love, they like tie dye. I don't even know who that is. I think those are like renters of the street. No, I think it's across the street. Is. And did tie dye and wore the t-shirt. And from the blog, I had not even a large amount of followers on my personal account. I don't think I ever even hit anything more than 5,000. Um, but like, like you were saying before, it was all organic. I never bought followers. I never did any of those underground things that yeah, some people Yeah, a lot of people played do. the game. That was the game five years ago. That's right. not the game now, because no. that's just top of funnel you're paying was, for, and it doesn't work. Which is one of the reasons why I stopped because I felt like that wasn't my scene anymore. Mm -hmm. It's a very, not even cutthroat, but there's so many, it's all smoke and mirrors. Yeah. And everybody was buying followers yeah. and buying likes. And people wanted to get to the 10,000 follower because then you had the swipe up. Yeah. And then you were big time if you had the swipe up. So yeah. I didn't have a lot of followers, I didn't care. I was still making, I was still working with brands. It didn't, it didn't bother me. But um, I posted my tie-dye t-shirt on my personal page. I think I took my daughter to get French fries and we were just sitting in the car and somebody said, oh, is that a cella shirt? And I said, I said, no, I said, I just, I just tie dyed it. And she said, well, can I, are you, are you gonna sell them? And I said, okay. So you couldn't get white pieces anywhere because everybody was tie dyeing. You couldn't mm -hmm. get, so I went upstairs Got Why my, was everybody tie-dyeing? Because that was just what people were doing during COVID, just the past time. So like and everybody they, was in sweats, so everybody was the just tie-dyeing. Did the say to tie-dye or was something? I, I, if they did, then that's probably why people yeah. were doing it. You should have hit up Trump and he should have... I should have said... Endorsed tie-dye and then they would have stopped. I'm going to get him. Yeah. So he... So I said to my husband, give me all your old white t-shirts. I want to just play around. So I was selling 
old white t-shirts that I had colored and they were moving. So this is weird. So then I finally got my hands on a sweatshirt and I still have the sweatshirt to this day. And I did a, like a, like a pre-order. I had no sweatshirts in my house. I was just putting out the product. Let's see what happens. And it brought in thousands in one sale. Mm -hmm. And I said, this is weird because everybody's able to do this. And everybody was doing it. Everybody was tie dyeing. What was the difference? What was so different about mine? I still don't feel like I know the answer. Do you think it was your, your blogger followers, your people that connected with you? I think you? maybe, I mean, I think relationships play a huge part. There's girls who um, I don't know in person, but who have followed me since the first You stay connected, blog, you right? see their family grow. Right, and, they, and I've seen them become moms and get married, like they've done, you know, for me. Um, and it just always, it was just always easy. And I think I, like I said before, I'm not a, you know, I'm not a fake it to you make it. Like mm -hmm. my captions, I curse, you know, when I'm on stories, I curse. I'm not like a prim and proper type of person. And I think that's what people yeah, like. Yeah, it resonates with people. Um, so sales were crazy. And then I was getting people asking about custom orders. So I would do some new colors and bring those in and then those would sell out. So it grew because I still couldn't get anything from LA. You were blocked in a sense of product, but that it was, was still growing right. during COVID. And that was that was what got us through. Um, now, was your husband able to work at the time? He was fine with work. Yeah, mm -hmm. he didn't have any issues with work. They kind of had to change up his schedule a little bit to like offset people. Um, but he didn't have any issues with work, thankfully. But I mean, even if he did, I don't think that would have yeah. really played a part in it like financially now how do you feel as a, as a mom and as a, a woman who can help you know provide equal if not more income to the household um for your family uh, and doing it from the luxury of your home or your right. car and on my own time not that you don't work hard right right and that's the difference like a business owner works hard but i work when i want to work right so some people don't realize well why is ryan able to go for a walk during the middle of the day right it's because, you know, maybe I'm up at nine o'clock at night, you know, right. on, on DM or writing an email or, you know, coming up a new, uh, you know, content or whatever I, it may be. I think that's where passion comes into play mm -hmm. because nobody wants to not be with their kids if they have kids. Nobody wants to miss dance recitals or, you know, mommy, come play with me or, you know, come, come, yeah. come cuddle with me. Um, nobody, it's hard to say no. Nobody wants to miss those things. And... It's nice that I don't have to miss them most of the time. Yep. Um, but on busy days like today, there was just a lot that had to get done. And my youngest, who's still home, um, you know, can you come cuddle? And I said, yeah, you know, I'll be there in like two minutes. Yeah. Like, just give me two minutes. But it beats being out of the house for yeah. eight, ten hours a day just to get a paycheck. And some people can't, right? I've had some right. people come to me and they're like, hey, Ryan, like, that's just not for me. Like, right. my kids are and pulling away. And it's not. And it's yeah. not. It's not for, I right? get it. It's not. I and get that's it. fine. But for me, um, think about this too. Not to cut you off, but no. you just saw Colton coming to the backyard. Right. Prior to you guys coming here, he gets a little crazy. I got to get him inside because he gets me crazy. But he's helping Evan set up the cameras. He's seeing me put on the fire. Right. Daddy, what are you doing? We got a podcast. Well, a podcast, you know, right. a podcast. He's two years old. Imagine that compound effect by the time this kid's 18 year old. He's it's having guys walk in his backyard doing 30 mil of revs, 50 right. mil of revs, $100 million of revs. Like my daddy's interviewing all these cool business owners. Right. I don't know what he's gonna do, but there's a high probability because it's being shoved in his subconscious, he'll be a business owner. Right. And your daughters are seeing yeah. their mother do that. And I, 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 I'm not like looking for the lady's attention because I don't give a shit. And me personally, I'm not, I'm not like, oh, you're not women. like a feminist. Oh, yeah, no, no, I know you're not. No. I know you're not. But I'm not. I want to say like, like women are badass. My wife yeah. just gave birth naturally. Like that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Like I am upset when I have a cold. Right. Um, We're built different. Yeah, yeah. women are definitely <laughs> built different. <laughs> Gotta drive uh, home. What's your tattoos mean? Yeah, you, you have it showing. I have a lot. Which ones? Um, is that like a heart with a clock? This whole arm is 
the illustrations from the books that I read my kids when they were little. Really? Yeah, I'm that's... not like a morbid person, so I wanted something that you couldn't tell what it was. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so I did all the illustrations. The bee is, because we call the girls bees, I just like the bumblebee. That's cool. Um, I have their initials here. I have numbers here. This was numbers from my dad's favorite movie. And I didn't want something that just said like dad when mm -hmm. he passed, so. I got his numbers, the triangles. How my, long ago did your dad pass? Da, eight years. Eight years. My, yeah, I was pregnant with my oldest when he passed. So it took me a while to get these, I just got these. Um, and the triangle is my husband's badge shape, I guess. Mm -hmm. So we did and what that. what your husband do? State police. State police? Jersey, yes. Mm. Yes. Probably knows Chris Conrad, my other buddy. Maybe. Who knows, he probably he definitely knows Bosch. Maybe. Crazy Bosch. Maybe. But Bosch is now, I think Joint Terrorism Task Force. Yeah, my husband's detached from the road. Yeah. So it's, and I feel like everybody, when you hear like, oh, state police, everyone's like, oh, you must know so and so. But they're so like separated, yeah, really, yeah. No, like in, yeah, the whole, in the whole thing. And they kind of like, not that they like stick with their class, but everybody's, there's so many different units yeah. and detachments. So absolutely. But possibly. Well, shout out to police blue, officers because yes. I back the blue. Yes. Uh, not when they talk finance talk, though, because they piss me off. They're very <laughs> entitled with their finance talk. I've Sometimes. done rants about those, but I do back the blue all day long. Yes. We need law and order in this country. When Trump comes back, um, I can't wait. he's already president. Um, we're going to get some more law and order put into this country because need it's it. needed. It, yes. But before then, it's going to get worse, so make sure you have your bug out bag. We're ready. So... Talking about moms, moms in business. Yes. You're not boss babe. I'm you're not. not. I'm a feminist. I'm not. And uh, I support women. My wife is right. awesome. Without her, I cannot do everything I right. I do. Like right. straight up, there's no way in hell. Right now, she's battling a three week old up there crying right. and toddler. my toddler that's right. refusing to go to bed. Right. <laughs> uh, while we we right. do this podcast, have a drink. right? Yeah, and yeah. have a drink. Uh, but she gets it. She has the overall vision in her head of. Of, of our family. So right. I take nothing support. away from women or moms, but the boss right. babe, the over the top feminist, uh, it's right. not for me. I think, and I think like entrepreneurship is marketed so differently to women than it is what do you to mean? men. Like I resonate so much more with how you speak when you come on stories mm -hmm. than I would someone who's, oh, boss babes, like come check out. It's just, it's just. Corny? I think it just puts like a bad taste in everybody's mouth. Because, it's like fake. Well, yes, but then I feel like there's just a misconception about women who own a business. Yeah. Because what, you're, like, what do you mean? People think that I'm that I consider myself a, like a boss babe, and I don't. I'm just a I'm a mom. I'm a, a and woman and a win. wife, and I I make a lot of money, and I don't think that me being a woman has anything to do with the amount of money that I make. Yeah. Like. There's no guy who's gonna come on and say I'm a boss boy. Like, yeah. no, you're just you're just the boss. You there was started one the that business. Said that prior to the camera rolling, but yeah, we can't. I won't throw him under but, the bus. Right, but like that's I feel like that's just it's yeah it's corny. Yeah. It's just it's not it's not what you what you want to put out. To be very honest, like I've always been like m my mom. I have struggles with you, mom, but I love her and she's a loving lady. Um, and she always taught me, along with my father, to treat women right. Don't go into women's purse. Right. You walk into a party, you go give your aunts a hug, and you give your friend's mom a hug, and, and that's why I've always got along with most of my friend's parents, um, especially the moms. Right. Uh, so I fully respect women. Yeah. But when I first started kind of embarking down this road and keeping it real like I do, like sometimes I'll just get something in my head and I'm just like, let's fucking go. And I just I just run with it. And I'm like, oh, that's not going to resonate with women. And when I first started doing the show, it was like, well, like I had no women on. And that was like a, a roadblock of mine. Right. And then I started to realize, like, wow, there's some girls paying attention that I didn't think would be paying attention, that right. are liking it. That are, right, it's yeah. resonating, I feel like, with a specific type of woman. A tough, a tough chick. A tough chick. Could be, yes. No, it's it's a tough <laughs> chick. It's not Leslie, you know, uh, Konsig, uh, and I think I always say her last name wrong, but from Federated Insurance, like, she's a savage. Yeah. 
absolute savage. She's been through some tough shit. She doesn't sit there and look for empathy or anybody to feel right. bad for her. And I, right, I think that's a whole different a whole different topic too. Like, especially if you're a mom, every Shh. single mom has the same struggle. Our kids are sick. Our kids are home from school. Some are homeschooling. Not some, sleeping. All of the, th- right, all of, all of the things. But I feel like, and for me, I don't but think that- But the dad has that too. Right. But I don't think that there's a right way and a wrong way to go about that. But to me, my kids are not an excuse to not have something get done. Yeah. They're just not. So- I think accountability as a business owner, like if something doesn't get done, it's not because my kid was sick. It's because I didn't make the time to get it done. So Mm -hmm. tomorrow I have to, if she's homesick today and I don't have the same amount of hours that I would have had, that's why it didn't get done. I chose to not prioritize the business and maybe not get back to emails right away or maybe not fulfill an order or drop it off or have it picked up, whatever. You can't sit there and say, well, you're a mom too, so you get it. No, mm-hmm. there's never been a time in my three years that I've made my kids become an excuse yeah. as to why something didn't get done. And you see that a lot. Maybe, I mean, I'm sure men don't unless you follow you know, certain brands that are run by women, but it's very common. And I feel like it's so disheartening because you can, you can have it all. You can do everything. And I posted something today and I tagged you in it of what I had to do today I and like what it. I was doing. And somebody it. DM'd me and said, how many hours do you have in your day? And I said, not enough. And I don't have gas either now in my truck. And gas is $10 a gallon. So, but it, it has to get done. Mm-hmm. Like there's, there's no other option. It's just me. Well, people have to be intentional with their time. And I think a lot of times, right. you know, especially, um, Moms, uh, actually, I'm not even gonna go there, but a lot of people who get up and they don't have a plan to their day. Right. You gotta have a plan to your day. Sensor. And I got ADHD, right? right? I don't love to live by a regimented camera, right. uh, calendar. Like, I have a defiance disorder on my own calendar that I made. Right. Sounds fucking whack, but But I it do. works, right. It's, but if I don't force myself that structure, then it, my day's like this, right? I have an operations manager, Mac Milwaukee. He's the man. Whether people realize it or not, that dude holds my business together. Right. And I have partners and staff and everything else that is built. But without Matt and keeping that calendar straight, my life it's isn't compounded. Yeah, it's a mess. You've yep. got to be intentional about your time. Right. And you have much more time in a day than most people. If you lay around till 10 o'clock in bed, that's your bed. Right. That's your bed. I don't care if your kid was up all night. So right. was mine. Right. I don't care if you're a male or a female. Right. So let's move on from right. the topic. I'm no, always much more that. time. No, but I think I think in the in the female business owner entrepreneur world, I think not that women use the excuse because they think that they can. But I know if I'm spending m- my money on your brand, no matter what it is, I don't care if you have 10 kids, it needs to get done. Mm-hmm. You need to follow through with your brand and stand behind your brand and either give me the product or give me the service, or whatever it is. Or outsource it if you can't do it because right, you're being right, a mom. Right, it's 2022. Yeah. There's, I feel like there's no excuse Yeah, at I all. agree, I agree. and. Men and women are different, but we're also not different, and we're also not equal. We're not, uh, right. Yeah, you know, for, for many different reasons. Right. Um, so, moving along, uh, you know, talking about COVID, right, and, you know, making the money that you did, allowing you to get up there and provide an, a, a, an equal income to your household. Right. Um, again, if not more than, than your husband was making, it also allowed you guys as a family to make other personal decisions in your life that you really wanted to do. So again, right. going back to being a parent, going right. back to being a mom, we all saw the craziness that was going on in the school districts yeah. during COVID. And I don't give a shit what anybody says. It's been proven 10 different ways sideways, the mask yep. and all that bullshit was for something to just show that the powers to be above us were, were in power, were right. in control. Uh, they had authority, right? And I think actually, you know, Fauci, that piece of shit recently, <laughs> he, he came out and said like, the masks don't work, but it's about authority or, or something to that nature. The, the uh, New York Post came out and said that they did a study and in areas that had more compliance with the masks saw no lesser yeah. cases 
and the, the data doesn't show that they were safer. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, we can go on and on about masks, but you wanted to put your kids in private school. Yeah. Well, we knew public was not for us yeah. with COVID, and I had we I had no plan whatsoever. Um, I had my youngest in Goddard that we wound up pulling her out of because they decided they wanted to do masks. And I said, that's fine. I'm not one to argue with whatever your protocol I'm just is, going my way. but I'm just, I'm just not giving yeah. you my money. So, that's freedom. That's what's right. okay. So we pulled her out. Um, and my daughter, my oldest was in public and then we pulled her out and I homeschooled for a year and I, and I was terrible at it. She thrives in a classroom and I knew that from day one. Um, but I was not giving in and my kids don't wear masks. They didn't. And we, at the time, private school wasn't, a, wasn't an option. It just wasn't, um, Cella was doing very well, but we were also private schools, very expensive. Yeah. Um, and New Jersey is very expensive. And thankfully so, you were killing it now and had the right. ability to do it. And the second that we kind of like overlooked and went back and looked at our numbers and we saw that it was possible, I toured two schools um, and that was it. I signed her up to one and now my youngest will be going there as well um, in the fall. It's amazing. And to me, that's success. I yeah. think everybody's idea is is different. Like, I don't care if you make one sale a day or if you make a thousand sales a day, you could just want to put food on the table or pay off, you know, student loans 100%. or credit cards. Um, my idea of success has changed. It always will. It always will. Um, but in this moment, I just turned 34 a couple of days ago and I was thinking, Happy thank you. And I was thinking like, I like, I never thought we would be here. Like we got married super young. We, he wasn't in his career yet. I was just kind of, you know, doing jobs, whatever. And we had Mila very young. We just bought a house. Like we didn't, and then he went to the academy where you make shit money. Mm -hmm. And it was the only income. And I was just saying to him the other day, like, did you ever think we would be here? Like we can go on vacation really whenever we want. We have two kids in private school. Like we're able to do so much more and it's, you're just, living the dream. It's to financial me, freedom. Yeah, it is. It is. And it like it has nothing to do with like the car that you drive. Yes, it's wonderful to have a nice car. But I've had cars that were shit, so I can appreciate it. Yeah. You know what I mean? There were times where I obviously couldn't pay bills and I had all that credit card debt. Like obviously, just like you said earlier, my story made me. Yeah, I guess it did. I think I'm a very I always look at the the bright side, no matter what it is, yeah. I always have. Um, and my mindset has always been, it always works out because it does. So even when you're like in the trenches, like all I did was have an idea and I just continued with, with it. it. And now to me, my life right now is exactly what I would want it to be. Yeah, and that's- A thousand percent. And that is success. Right. Um, success is what you make of it. Right. And, um, what would you tell the young guy or girl looking to go online via a blog or e-com and open up a store? Even even a guy that's looking to sell surf apparel. Right. You know, what's one thing that you think is very important that still to this day, from the beginning and still to this day, is very important to owning a business online? That it's really hard. And if you're in it for the right reasons and you don't stop you'll make it you'll make it a thousand percent because like we said before the passion is not there for a lot of people people think everything quick is money, quick fame they think they can start a podcast and it takes off or they want to become an influencer i can't tell you how many times people would message me i want to be an influencer like you i said i I'm not an influencer. I don't want anything to do with that world. It's just, it's just not. You did it temporarily. I did it, I worked with brands for a year. Mm -hmm. I worked with Reebok. I worked with Origins, which is like a skincare company. Um, and I hated it. Yeah. I hate it working on somebody else's time frame. You're like a pawn, you're like a. Like you a have to. in their game. Yeah, you have to say certain things in the captions, which yeah. weren't me. 
Yeah, like, I, like I to, love Biden. I lo- right. You. Yeah. You know, we're talking about a lot of these different things and how it affects, you know, what you're doing. I, I think the coolest thing about America is the freedom. And, you know, Patrick uh, Bet David, um, he's been on Joe Rogan's podcast now. He's a guy that works in the financial planning space like I do. Um, he's into all different types of stuff now. And this dude is is from the Middle East. Yeah. He grew up a completely different way around right. real danger. And this guy is putting himself out there to potentially lose clients, lose money, like Trump did, right. for this country, for freedom. So touching on what we just talked about, you have the freedom to say yes. Right. You have the freedom to say no. Right. You know, recently I, I walked into uh, my dentist. Uh, I should throw him under the bus because, you know, you know, fuck you, <laughs> but uh, I won't because I've grown. And, you know, they're telling me to put on a mask. Meanwhile, the front of the desk lady's putting it up. The, right. the doctor's in the back when it's down. The lady comes around the corner yelling at me about the CDC. That was the funniest one. She had no mask on. And then she was like, uh, I was in the back. We changed all of our medical offices. Yeah, don't. Because some still don't require. Don't tell me what to fucking do in right. my household with my family, right. with my health. You could suggest to me, hey. you could put educational packets out there. I'm That's gonna fine. decipher the information, right. I'm gonna say yes or no. Recently we had a kid, as you know, and the pediatric doctor said, hey, you know, you should have the vitamin K shot. For what? It's 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 to, to help, you know, make sure that they don't have a bleeding event. Well, what right. would you do, doc, if I had a bleeding event? Right. What would you do if my daughter had a bleeding event six months from now? You would give them a blood transfusion. Right. You would do different things to help their blood clot. So, I don't like when things are pushed on me. Correct on any side right. of anything. Yep. It doesn't mean that I'm against what you're right. doing or right. whatever. I don't care what you're doing. I don't care what right. you're doing, yeah. Um, uh, this guy's sad. I think it's sad. I think I'm saying it right. He's on Rogan, he's a professor from Quebec. And he calls him the, uh, the blue hair, the blue hair uh, jihad. The blue hair jihad, and he's he's so fucking right. You know, these people are worse than like, you know, real terrorists. It's you know, it's like you God forbid you have a different view than them. Right. They're coming for you. And then you. it's an argument, and it doesn't have to be an argument. Yeah. Like I don't, yeah. I don't care who you do what you want to do. Right. Um, they're probably going to come for me, but <laughs> they don't realize that I'm ready for them. Um, moving along. You know, talking about. A woman in business, a mom in business, a wife in business. Um, I've posed this question a lot to the men, um, and not enough to the women. Okay. And uh, Leslie, I was talking about earlier, yeah. she's coming on soon. Um, I'm going to talk to her about her partner and what they do, but are you making time for your husband? Yes. Are you making time to do the right things for your kids? And obviously we just talked about the time yeah. and, and the freedom and flexibility. Um, are you making time for date night? Because mm-hmm. yeah. as a business owner, these are things that sometimes get shoved to the side. How do you make that time? And uh, on a level of, of, of scale of priority, where is it for you and your husband? The top? It's at the top. Is that is that an answer? Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, we've been married 10 years. We had some brutal years, which I think Everyone does. Anybody has. Um, but I think when you genuinely enjoy each other and you have grown together, marriage is not easy. And I don't want to talk to somebody who says that it is because so it's hard. not. Um, we also met and got married very quickly. We were just crazy and everybody thought that I was pregnant and I wasn't. And we were just young and in love. crazy and in love. And um Everybody probably bet three months or a year or whatever it is, but um, we just genuinely enjoy each other. Like he was, he just had to go away for work for five weeks. So I was home with the kids, obviously. Very difficult to do when you have a business and you don't have extra hands and school drop off and pick up because there's no busing for the private school that we're at. Um, but we still talked every day, all day. Like we, we genuinely missed each other, yeah. right? And it was nice, um, but yeah, date nights are important. I mean, we just went out for my birthday, but even like before that, we just like, we have shows that we watch together. We talk, if we're not together, we talk honestly 
All the time. All, all the time. That's um, Kelly and I. Yeah, and it's not because I feel like we have to. It's if something funny happens while friend. I'm out, I'm like, oh my God, like, guess what just yeah. happened? Or like, oh, like when you get home, like I have, you know, like a funny story. Um, I mean, we genuinely enjoy each other. And I always say to him, like, I just like doing life with you. Like, it's yeah. not just the date nights and, you know, vacations and all that stuff. It's like figuring out like our finances. I enjoy doing that with him. I enjoy setting financial goals and meeting them together and him, you know, asking about cello or me asking about something with work. Um, it's cool, you're working on your goals together. I just, yeah. There's an like, overall goal for the family unit, your right, tribe. Right, and every year it gets better because financially we're better and mm -hmm. we're able to do, like there was a time we couldn't even pay to go to Disney and we had, you know, my mother-in-law gifted it to us. Mm -hmm. And he said, if we don't, and I said, I don't want to take the money. And he said, if we don't do it now, we're never going to be able to go. And we've gone like six times since then. Yeah. And we've brought her along with us. Good you know what you. I mean? Yeah. So we, Return you know, favor. yeah, I just. And I mean, I'm not, I'm that type of way. I don't love, I don't like to have someone give me something. Yeah, it was a beautiful gesture yeah. and it was wonderful, of course. Um, but again, that's that, that's that winner yeah, mentality Because in I you. just thought if we can't afford it, we shouldn't, we shouldn't, we shouldn't go. go. We shouldn't yeah. go. And he just said, if we don't, we're never going to be able to go. And I so said, jumping okay. back to the business a little bit. And I wanted to bring this up before. You and I on the phone, when we first talked, we talked about a, a few shops over in Paris, I yeah. think. So we started, okay, so this is a whole different topic of how yeah. I got to We're jumping around, in. jumping yeah, around. Yeah, we're but jumping I around. I wanted to get this. So in 2020, I started wholesaling. Mm -hmm. So a friend of mine at the time had brought, What does that mean in your world? What, wholesaling? For someone who doesn't know what that means, what does that so mean? So I sell my pieces to a retailer and then they resell them. Mm. So at the, my, a friend of mine at the time had brought me onto a project. She was working with a doctor. She, she did printing and she said, the doctor wants tie dye type of pieces. Like, do you want to come onto this project? And I said, yeah, and it was huge. And I looked at it and I said, why am I not doing this more? Because the money was just like astronomical. Mm -hmm. So I kept that up and I signed on to like two different wholesale platform type of websites where brands could come on and shop you for their store. And I said, if I can just get one a month, that would be great. I could, you know, financially, that would be wonderful. And I was getting like two a day. Wow. And I said, this is insane. There's, there's no way that this is gonna continue. And in 2021, I think I did 191 stores. Wow. And Germany. Is there any like big names over in it doesn't, Paris or so Germany? It, or? it doesn't always go by the name of the store. It sometimes goes by the owner. Yeah, the company um, they're so, buying for right, multiple stores. So, um, but we had, we had a London order come through, Paris, Germany, Canada had a couple, and then like all over the US. One is on like Rodeo Drive. Are you learning a little bit about shipping? Because shipping is always a, Shipping is uh, interesting. Yeah. Um, the wholesale platforms take care of it for you, which is nice, but I do take orders like just privately. Um, I actually just did a deal with Chinzia and her whole rebrand in the new salon. Mm -hmm. um, so we dropped off pieces today. She loved them. They came out gorgeous. Chinzia is a killer. Yeah, she's amazing. The salon's stunning. The staff is just everything. Yeah. It's just, it's her. Yeah, like, it's to definitely a her. It's beautiful. Um, but shipping's interesting. Most of the time it's taken care of for me, but when I take them privately, I have like my own little system. Yeah. But it's not, I haven't had any issues with that. Um, but there was a time where we had like a 30 day turnaround time. Are you still continuing to do wholesale? That's 90% of wow. my income is wow. wholesale. Yes. Now, where do you want to take this? Like you're in the six figures now. Yeah. Like where, we did where, it. where do you want to go? Bigger. Um, I don't know if I would necessarily want like a storefront. No, I'm not talking about retail storefront. I'm talking about revenues. Where do you want to take it? I could see it way hitting like millions. Seven figures, yeah. yeah. I can. It couldn't be just me, of course. I would have to have But do you have a road map? Do you a have team a, on. Do you have a map to go chase that down and the way to go do it? No, I don't have anything. But yeah. I never had anything. Like yeah. when I first did it, I 
I never thought that it wouldn't be successful. I didn't know where it was going to be. And my husband always says, like, what if somebody comes in and like wants to buy it? But again, we got to get more attentional, right? right? We got to know, like, I want to go over there. I want to hit seven yeah. figures. All right, now I got to backfill that. Right. What are the and sub you goals to, do, to right. do it? You have um, to. You have to work backwards. We could talk more about yeah. that. Yeah. That that's awesome. But I could see for sure. I could you're see it. You're wholesaling over in London yeah. and Paris and Yeah, they Germany. come in and I'm like, oh shit, like that's wow, crazy. Wow, you're kind of like a mez now. It's like, crazy. I'm, I'm like talking to like a I big designer. I had somebody designer. who did. Um, she has a huge store on the seaside boardwalk. But the thing is, too, people buy the pieces to make merchandise for their store, like what I did with Chinzia. She bought the pieces and then we printed Look on them, you. so now yeah. it's merchandise for her. And I I enjoy helping people make money yeah like i genuinely do so if somebody can bring in my product and it's a win-win for everybody and price it at a price point where they're going to meet financial goals and maybe they can you know put their you know whatever their idea of success is supplementing their business i can help them do that like very very easily and i i noticed in like for for me the messages on cella would go from product questions to business questions like, oh, well, how did you do this? And you know, you should launch a it, coaching group. And I just, I, I like being transparent. I don't think that there's really big secrets that like I need you to kind of. You can tell everybody right. everything, and ninety percent of the people will never They're take not action. Do it. Right. Yeah. Right. So, I want to wind this down. Um, I like to ask a couple questions here at the end. The first question is, if there was one thing, and we talked about working hard. But if there was one thing that you could tell any entrepreneur, not just in your space or the internet, oh, man. anybody who's looking to be a small business owner and do what you did as a, a mom, um, what would you? What would that be? One thing. One thing. It's going to be generic. It's going to be to not ever call it a small business. What do you mean by that? I don't think there's anything small about, well, when you do it the right way. I don't think there's anything small about applying for a business license mm -hmm. and then getting it and it has your name on it. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's anything small about having a $10,000 a month or a $1,000 a month. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, it's mindset, but I've never called Chella a small business. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's why I am where I am now, but the way that I look at it. It's like, a big deal. It's a very, very big deal. It takes a lot of balls. And it is. When you talk about right. small business, though, in, in the means of the business world, it's just rev range. Right. So it's rev range, employee right. size. But I just, I mean, like, for me, when I hear it, it makes it sound like... Lesser than? Like a hobby. Yeah. Like, this is just what I do to, like, Well, there's some time. small businesses that do $50 million dollars of revs, right. so it's not well, small. I mean, I'll take that. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take that. I get what you're saying. And, yeah. And that's a, that's a good mentality to have. Like, no, I'm doing something big. It is I'm big. doing it for my family. Right. I like to ask two other business owners that you like to give a shout out to. Oh, man. That are in the area or someone you deal with online. Um, and give them a little bit of love, and maybe there's a slot for them in the future. A slot on the fire for them. Side. I would love to see Shalini come on. Um, my girlfriend owns Bijou and Spice. She has an incredible jewelry brand. Um, very meticulous. We're very opposite, but her just her eye for everything, the way that she styles and the pieces that she brings in, quality is everything to her. Um, she she loves to grow and learn, which I think is huge. I think you can have friends when you kind of, not necessarily give constructive criticism to. Some it, people get offended. Yeah. And then there's people who take it. Eat it up and, and grow. they're like, yes, yeah. like tell me, yeah. okay, like let me maybe try it that way or let me try it my way first and then I can kind of go back to you. We always bounce ideas off of each other and we've watched each other grow and I think it's just like a genuine love. She's a girl I grew up with. Uh, wonderful. She's great. She's right downtown Point Pleasant, the jewelry joint. Okay. She, she's been killing it. You yep. know, she's got her own little flair. You know, I don't know jewelry at all. Right. Um, but uh, that's another difficult space to stick out in. It's so hard. Yeah. You better work hard at being yep. meticulous and detailed and being yep. open-minded to constructive yep. criticism. Yeah, and she she points things out to me, and I'm like, I never would have even notice that because I don't have the eye for it. Obviously not jewelry's not right. And she's just, she kills it. What's yeah. another one? Another one, we talked about them, La Mandina, in Brio. Well, Carmine action. Carmine, um, went to school with him probably, I'm pretty sure since, since middle school. Um, 
he, known them, the family, they're just, his parents are wonderful, his brothers are great. Um, one of our favorite restaurants to go if there is date night. We usually are, are huge Charlie's fans only because it's literally right here and they pick us up on a golf cart. I've been there once. Yeah. I think it was once and it was good. It was good. It's a different crowd and my wife and I go in there and we don't care about the bougie We used to love yeah. the bartenders that were there right. and the staff that was there and that's kind of you know, morphed over time just like any restaurant. Right. Uh, but La Madina is usually our second go-to. Mm -hmm. uh, they make great drinks, yes. great food. Um, and Carmine also offered up his private room for a good deal for mastermind events that yes, I throw I every saw. quarter. Mm -hmm. um, and they do an excellent job with that. Staff does an excellent mm -hmm. job. So shout out to La Mandina. La Mandina, amazing. Um, I think he wants on the chat. He's he's too big to fill out the application, but I think he'll fill it out he soon. He should do I don't it. Know. Yeah. Well, listen, I appreciate your time. Thank you. I appreciate your realness. Um, I liked our banter about politics. Yeah. That will turn some off. Other people That's will like fine. it. Um, <laughs> I think keeping it real is rare in yeah. today, especially when it comes to money. People are very afraid to speak their mind. And uh, I think we're going back to the old American spirit soon. Uh, we have to get a little bit darker before we get yeah. to some more light. We'll get there. But we're going to get there. Um, I appreciate you. I appreciate your time. Thank you. I thank your husband. Is he at home watching the kids? He's home. Well, yeah, they're sleeping now. They yeah. go to bed early. Um, but, yeah. This has been great. Thank we you. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers.